Hi, I'm Bob Gallagher, the mayor of the city of Benton, North Iowa. Today is Friday, March 15th, 2024. Welcome to TBK Bank Sports Complex for our 200th mayor's message. They start competitions here this weekend, so I thought it'd be a great opportunity to come talk to the developer about what has happened here and the development that it's spurred, as well as our friends at Visit Quad Cities who can tell us the impact it's had on our community and why tourism is important. So today, we welcome our Focus Real Estate Development Manager, Kevin Kellner, and his team. He's going to speak for his team, obviously, that put this all together. Kevin, thanks for joining the Mayor's Message. Thanks for being here, Mayor. Appreciate it. And from Visit Quad Cities, the President and CEO, Dave Harrell. Dave, thanks for joining the Mayor's Message. Thank you, Mayor. Appreciate you being here. Let's start with you, Kevin. Your development company built this building and the stuff around it here in phase one, as well as you're working towards phase two. Tell me approximately the cost of the building in which we stand today. The cost of the TBK facility, as we know it, is about 52 million. Okay. Um, in today's dollars, that would probably be 75 million. Yeah. Fortunately or unfortunately, however you want to look at it. You're starting that. to figure that out on the other yes, side of the street, are you not? Yes, okay. we have. So, but this has really brought people to our area. Not only can kids from the area come here to recreate and learn and compete, we've got folks coming from all over, which started to spur some other development. Tell us about what's out front here in the Plex. Yeah. So, um, with the TBK facility as the anchor and sort of the magnet, um, we've got about $25 million of development around it here. Um, and we still have about 10 acres left to develop. So Here we, on phase one? Here on phase one that we could put in another six to eight buildings or maybe some multifamily at some point, but we have 10 acres easily left on this side of the road in phase so one. That development went quick. The development went way quicker than we ever imagined. Uh, the way it started, uh, we were under construction with the TBK and uh, we knew we had to um, speculate a bit on the retail development. So the way it happened, our first two tenants were actually Subway and Coffee Hound and Cheesy Cow. Okay. Coffee Hound and Cheesy Cow are yeah, both owned together. by Greg and Beth Aronson, yeah. which I like to thank for their confidence. And so uh, it just so happened that each of them needed drive ups and the way the property was situated, we had to then speculate two buildings. Uh -huh. I was very nervous about that at the time. We knew we had a great magnet here. We just didn't have any idea of the magnitude and where we're at now is well beyond our wildest dreams. So much so that you're developing across the street in phase two, the Iron T and some more uh, athletic fields. Tell us about that development. Yeah. So, um, Ryan Hintz, who's heading up the Iron T project, approached me um, a few years ago and said, hey, I have this idea and this concept and I have some licensing agreements in place to get there. Um, I'd like to do uh, what everyone else knows as a top golf facility. And I think it'd be great out by the TPK. Yeah, I agreed with them it's and uh, pretty immediately uh, reached out to Doug Kratz and said, you need to be part of this. And Doug's the guy who put phase one together for the most part, right? He's Doug, a pretty hard charging guy. Doug is the guy that put phase one together and drove all of this. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, so Doug uh, jumped on board pretty immediately and said, you know, we'd like to expand our footprint a little bit, um, do some more fields to sort of up, uh, up the uh, TBK and stature, kind of keep the other guys a little wary of what we're doing here. We want to be the big dog. Yeah. And so we put together in combination with you and the city, as you are aware, a development agreement that allowed us to put the Iron T in place. And we're going to build the sports buildings roughly the size of the indoor soccer field here at TBK. When do you start uh, moving ground for the indoor sports facility? The indoor sports facility actually started moving ground this week. Wow. See, perfect timing. And Mr. Hintz is about ready to open Iron T in uh, May time frame. Yes, mid-May time frame. Okay, so we're excited about that. Uh, they're out looking for folks to come work there. So if you're interested, take a look at Facebook or call Iron T. They're really ready to start hiring. So yes, yes. what else do we expect to happen as a result of the development there, similar to here, plus Iron T in the front? You've already got a bunch of shops that look like they're filling up buildings. Yes, we've, uh, we've got about 18,000 square feet completed and all but 1100 square feet of that is leased already. Oh, wow. So we're building that out right now. We have a, a principal financial group is the only business open at this point, but okay. there'll be others joining them here shortly. Uh, we also have McDonald's that broke ground this week. 
Okay. And the Spring Hill Suites is also uh, underway as of this week. And you've got other corporate tenants building buildings out here as well. We do. Um, ORA is uh, going to break ground in June. Okay. That'll be 117,000 square foot That's medical huge. office and surgery center. Yeah, yeah. And uh, with Quad City Bank coming out, that's going to be another one. Quad City Bank will be our neighbor on the southeast corner of Correct. Middle and Forest Grove, and we're looking forward to them joining us. Yeah, so your development as, a, as the development team has spurred development now on another corner, and we're getting some tire kickers on the other corners. There's, there's all kinds of cool stuff. Right, right. We've actually... Kind of coming to fruition. We've actually purchased some ground on the north side of the interstate as well right. um, in speculation. And we're actually partnering with uh, Bush on 63 acres just west of the TBK, but adjacent to the TBK. And that's a mixed use development right here, just west. That's correct. Everybody wants to be on the hot corner and you guys started the hot corner. Thank you very much for joining <laughs> us and for your investment and taking that risk. Yeah, you know, when we did this, we said, you know, the weekends would be great. Can we get the locals to come out? And it's almost flipped now where the local support is outweighing the weekend support. But the weekend support, as Dave will speak to, is all outside dollars. Yeah. So it's just it's just a huge win-win. Let's move to Dave. Dave Harrell, our president and CEO of Visit Quad Cities. Dave, why is it important to bring people who don't live here to our community? What is that tourism importance? Well, that non-resident revenue is like gold. And I think the more times that we can focus on with intentionality, trying to get folks like Kevin Kellner, Doug Kratz to invest in regional assets like this so that the public sector can see the tax revenues that it wants to see. Right. But then also from a catalytic opportunity and what Kevin just touched on, all of the incremental development that's happened around this neighborhood, it's just a game changer for the Quad Cities. It's obviously huge for you know Bettendorf. But it's also kind of that front porch as it relates to Illinoisans the whole quad city. transitioning into Iowa and that Iowa 80 corridor to have that kind of visibility and to have an asset like this come alive in just a few short years just shows what the private sector can do in terms of a level of investment that's going to benefit the entire region. Talk about that tourism dollar and really over the five years that TBK Bank Sports Complex Phase 1 has been opened, including... COVID, where are we? What kind of other money is coming in? Well, I think quite frankly, without an asset like this, you know, particularly during the pandemic, we wouldn't have been able to see the revenues that are being driven into this market. And it's not just always about hotel motel tax revenue. Right. It's like the whole system. It's sure. sales tax, it's, you know, gaming revenue, it's, you know, food and beverage, it's you name it, gas. And so when you have an asset like this, it's going to generate a significant amount of money. And over that five year period, we know that there's literally been about 7.7 .7 million people that have been activated in this asset or alone. Or 16 years old, tell us how you find that. Right, and so you, just being able to like look at that business intelligence and okay. look at that analysis, you know that this asset is paying dividends for our community. And that outside revenue that's coming in every week is something, quite frankly, like we need to be competitive. This is not only something that's generating tourism dollars, but it's about brand positioning. It's also, I think, helping with not only resident pride, but also talent attraction, talent retention, all of the things that you need to do to move the community forward without having a complex like this and then Iron T and all of this development, we're not gonna be able to recruit people to maybe take a job in the Quad City. So it's got a broader economic development you know, feel to it than I think maybe people give it credit for. So you know, hats off to Kevin, hats off to, to Doug, hats off to the city for making it happen. So we're realizing almost $50 million or so per year and revenue from outside sources, and that's great. But you hit on something I think is really important. That one point, almost three million visitors over a five-year period, that big seven million number, about 1.3 or four is from outside the region. How important is it that they get here, that they meet the people, that they see the rest of the Quad Cities for what we really are, an awesome place to live, work, play, invest? 
and visit? Well, I think the, the reality of it is you have to be aggressive in the sales and marketing arena. And if you're not, then you're just not going to be able to move the community forward. So literally every week, I think we're capturing a very captive audience from all over the place. And it's not just Iowans and Illinoisans. I mean, certainly our source markets are places like you know, Chicago and Milwaukee and Madison. But we're seeing people from all over the Midwest that are experiencing this yeah. asset with regularity and even as far as like New Hampshire. Yeah, 38 and states. So we, we know that they're coming in here. And so they wouldn't be coming to the Quad Cities if not for something like the TBK Bank Sports Complex. And I think the fact that we realize it knows this in terms of like being a Quad Citizen or know this, you've got to leverage it. So the more times that we can invest and think through the strategy around how are we utilizing it from a marketing and promotional perspective, that's just going to position us for more. Well, I appreciate all the good work you do at Visit. Thank you. I've been able to be on the board of directors there with a bunch of great people, really working hard with a strategic plan to move this uh, whole region forward, just like this sports complex has done, putting people in restaurants and bars and hotels throughout the entire community. So we're really pleased with the development with Mr. Kratz's investment and the things that you guys do as partners to make this a better place each and every day. Thanks so much for joining us. Number 200, have a great weekend.